What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Duke and Don. I appreciate you guys being here. Like I said, y'all could be anywhere in the world right now, but you're here right now, and I appreciate that. All right, today we're gonna have an interesting conversation, and I think it's a very important conversation that has to be had. Yes, today, guys, a very important conversation, and that's about dating and relationships in our community, particularly the black community. All right, and Listen, guys, I can't have this conversation by myself, okay? I had to ask a little bit of help, all right? And you guys probably know this person that I'm about to bring up right now. And listen, 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 all right? It'd be, like, crazy, like, if you guys don't even really realize what's about to happen right now. Because this stream, okay, it's about to be fire. So with that being said, before we introduce our guests, I would like for you all to hit the like button. Hit the sub button, the bell notification, so you guys get alerted when we get new videos out there. And with that being said, let's go ahead and introduce the one, the only, the guy, a man of the hour, the godfather of the black manosphere, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Listen, I know you don't go by that. I know it's a kind of a, a, a title that was put on you, just kind of the work because of the work you've put in. But I really appreciate you being here, man. Thank you. No, thank you so much. And you know, Kevin is the godfather. I'm just, you know, uh, another Negro man, you know, doing my thing, man. But I, I definitely have been watching you, uh, your, your takedowns of certain guys and PUA artists in the sphere. So you, you have a really good personality. And uh, I was actually really glad that you uh, offered me a chance to come on, brother, and talk to you. So are you I'm glad kidding to be here. Me? Are you kidding me? Uh, hands down. You're damn right, man. Some of the most respected person in the space. I, it's an honor to have you here, man. I appreciate it. So, I mean, we got we got a conversation we're about to have today. And obviously, right. it's a, a topic about, you know, relationships in the African-American community, particularly, you know, black men and black men relation, black women and black men uh, relationship. And right. we kind of know, you know, in the greater manosphere at large and even kind of in the black manosphere uh, where mm -hmm. you hail from, it's a deep conversation because we oh, talk yeah. about, you know, black women and, you know, mm -hmm. how they're in terms of dating. They're not mm -hmm. in they're not the the first choice let's just put it that way uh, yes. for most people and yes. even for now what we're starting to see is even for black men now where we're mm -hmm. seeing a lot more options being opened up we're also right. seeing competition that way what are your thoughts uh, we'll, we'll kind of start general but what are your thoughts overall when you see the african-american community in the dating mm -hmm. and, and whatnot what are your overall thoughts on it and then where do you kind of see this all going if we keep going down the same path well let me kind of you know break down what I'm what I'm seeing now and I, I know that you're a brother that is uh in the Nigerian American community and um and then obviously um you're very close with a lot of the you know African Americans and Caribbeans yeah. so we kind of all roll together in one conglomerate and I want to make sure that I kind of specialize um the different groups that have better you know because when we look at the, the African American community and then there are some blacks that are like second generational Nigerian or, or, or Caribbean. When I'm looking at all of these different black men, I'm noticing that all of the black men that are coming over, either from African American community, Nigerian or Ghanaian, or any other, you know, African group that's in America, they're all seeing some of the same things. Yeah. And, and even if these guys are coming from, you know, two parent homes and, and the family is, uh, you know, you know, which is, happens more or less yeah. with some of you, you know, your African immigrant families are coming over and Caribbean immigrant families. You, you're seeing that the programming is affecting the women of these communities also. Now, it's a little bit better in the Nigerian American communities because they tend to have a little bit more of a stronger culture and it's education true. and values are pushed um, a lot more. So they're, they're, and they tend to be more of a, a higher social class based off their productivity. And so there's a, a, a sometimes limiting factors as to who the children can marry and date. Yeah. So that's one thing. But what you start, what you are seeing though, let's see, let's deal with the, like the African brothers. Yeah. Still, you're seeing the, the, the Caucasian women beat out the women from their own communities. Yeah. This is still very interesting. Cause I know a lot of Nigerian American guys are guys from, you know, Ivory Coast, or Uganda, they're doing very, very well in America, and they have the opportunity to date inside the community. But for whatever reason, this person's the Igbo, or yeah. that person's the Yoruba, and that's already a problem as it is because of different tribes. Yeah. But what you're also seeing is that the parents, maybe those traditions have been overpowered by American programming. Yeah. 
So yeah. let's no, just look it, at the brother. You're, you're absolutely yeah. right because we're actually seeing that now, and and because we we also have like little get-togethers in our communities here in Madison, mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. we'll see is like even some of these guys they got white wives, and some even some of right. the young teenagers now they're coming out with white girlfriends. So it's interesting to see mm -hmm. that kind of mixture of races and whatnot in there. So yeah, you're, you're actually that's facts. And uh, let me use a, a, good, a good example, Mr. Virgil Abloh, who just mm -hmm. passed away. So now you're talking about um, a very talented Ghanaian American that went to, you know, he's from your mid Midwest part of the woods, yep. University of Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Yep. Then he went to the Illinois Institute of Technology. So you have a guy with an engineering degree, then goes yep. and get an architectural master's degree. He's already a very talented guy, but look who he's been dealing with since high school. Yeah. And it's not that there were not other Ghanaian communities or people there or Nigerians, because, you know, obviously if you're coming from Ghana, Tend to, people that tend to come from these places go to church together and things like that. Yep. So there are women that they can date. But the but the issue is that I'm thinking with some of these African women that are coming out, and I'll get on the African Americans later. Mm -hmm. I think them, the Haitians and the Caribbeans, their women are being influenced by the love of hip hop Atlanta. They're being yeah. influenced by maybe some of the female African American friends. And the, the, the values that the family initially instilled on them have been overpowered by what you're seeing in the programming. So they start to like more what the African-American women like. Now it's not as bad, but there is somewhat of a trending. And so the, the guys that I see coming from these, the emerging blacks, such yeah. as yourself, they're saying, okay, shit. Now, you know, me and this African-American guy, we're both black, but we have two different lifestyles. You know, my parents were engineers and he might've he might have came from a single parent home, but I'm seeing the exact same thing that he's seeing in I, I'm and I'm just in the African immigrant community and seeing these things. Yeah. Guys from Haiti are seeing the same things. Yeah. So that's the number one thing I, I, I noted. And I'll lump the Caribbeans and the emerging blacks into that. The African American guys are not coming up with the same family structure that you know Nigerian Americans are coming in with. Are the push for education? Yeah. They're not coming in with that discipline, and and, and then nor are the women. So what I'm seeing dating in the in the African sector is probably going to be more favorable. Yeah, but what you're seeing for the black men that are coming up usually, unless you live in black cities like Philadelphia, New York, it's typically harder for the African American men to go into these other sectors and date people unless you're like New York City. So yeah. it's, it's, it's unlikely to get an African American man to date a Nigerian American woman from a good family, simply because the family's like, look, well, where's this guy from? Yeah, you know, it's not about do because in the African American community, I'm gonna be along with it. What no, 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 no. Is, go. <laughs> what we care about, about is, like, for example, in, in, in our culture. We care about, do you love the person? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what we care about. So, Which, know, and I noticed Kevin Samuel says, like, what, what love has to do with it. And that's so true, because that's the one thing I never really understood. I watched my mom and my dad back in the day uh, when they would interact with each other. And it wasn't like, it was more of like, it was like, like a job like it was like this is business right. this is what you have to do so like yes. it wasn't like maybe the love part I, I wasn't live when that was going down but <laughs> was, you know what I'm saying so I didn't know what happened I did, I was the result of the love happening you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying yeah. but like throughout my existence watching them it was more of like all right this is what I have to do this yes. is what I got to get that and then dad's out here doing what he has to do so it was never right. really it was never that like, but when you come here that's when you really see that that I, I, I almost want to call it programming, right? You see the program right. where everyone's all about love and you know mm -hmm. this fantasy of like this, this person if he if he really wants me he'll come find me and it's like what mm -hmm. like wait where y'all getting this from? <laughs> but then it's but it's also so uh, infectious though, like even even to the mm -hmm. point like you know obviously we like I know some some of the girls from the Nigeria American community too as well, right? We still have the back and the culture kind of tethering us and holding us back. Oh yeah, but yeah. American culture does have a massive influence on how like some of our women at least some of the newer generation as i like sure. to say are behaving that that's for sure but not even there in nigeria itself i mean yeah, yeah. No. you know you're gonna go to nigeria and find you know and speaking of being a man all right one of the biggest part in terms of masculinity is your goddamn hygiene you got it folks all right that's why I am proud to introduce Teach Hanley as the sponsor of today's video. Listen, I don't know how many times I have to keep telling you people, all right? Teach Hanley has not only helped me start my skincare routine, but they've also helped me maintain that as well throughout the entire process. Honestly, by far the best skincare system for guys like you and me. 
Listen, I recommend you start with the level one system, which comes with all the basics. A daily face wash to get rid of all the dirt and grime in your skin. A two-time per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of all your dead skin cells. And an AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because you know what? You always got to be protecting your skin from the sun. All right? And a PM moisturizer. This is going to help you increase your skin, stay hydrated and healthy throughout the entire night my favorite part about teach handy is that every single box comes with its own instruction manual with how to use it when to use it and in what order so that way it gets you on the way to a good skincare routine guys i can't tell you they make this process super freaking easy listen i've been using the products for a little while now and it might sound weird but every time i wake up i really look forward to my morning scare, uh, skincare routine and my evening skincare routine and it's just because like every time i do it in the morning and i'm going out and about bro my skin feels amazing i'm feeling confident i'm looking smooth and i'm ready to take on the world listen in addition to amazing skin all right members of teach hanley gets access to exclusive bonus benefits including at least 20 percent off retail price that's two freaking zero bro and you get the ability to not only customize your box but pause or cancel anytime and free shipping to anywhere in the u.s and lower cost rates in other countries because teach hanley is sponsoring today's video they're offering you guys yes the viewers watching this video right now a great deal just click the link in the description below and not only you're not going to just get the teach hanley for the great pie but they'll also give you a free gift with your very first box what other freaking skincare company does that just click that link today and you can get started for just 30 dollars man real talk and with that being said let's get back to the video but let me kind of get back to uh yeah, go ahead so we, we care about more or less well what does she you know how is she is she does she love number one does she, does she love jesus yeah okay is she a christian um does she have a job or does he have a job and do you love her or do you love him yeah so the but the african community is going to ask what does he do where did he go to school mm. okay not what is he going to what who is his family See, those are the kind of questions that the the average immigrant family asks in the Caribbean community and in, in America that the that that only elite African Americans ask in the, the Jack and Jill circle and the elite black elite that we have. Yep. So that almost eliminates most African American men from seriously entering into like real relationships with African women. Now, and there's some sex that that may go on, sure, but to really be accepted, can she bring this guy home if he's a um, if he's a trucker or if he's a, no? This guy will be an embarrassment to the family. We're going to just have to be, be honest. Now, also, he doesn't know how to be a man. That's yeah. one of the things that you see that a lot of the other uh, communities have. In successful community, the male of the leader, he's a patriarch, so he has a really good example. Yeah. Okay? And, 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 and with our single parent out of wedlock rate going on, and we know that this, I think there's just some certain le levels of conspiracies about how this happened because we were the most we were the most married people in America yeah. just 60, 70 years ago to the you know to where we are now. Then you have the lady who never had seen the father. Mm. So you have these two groups of people trying to figure it out. And both of them are being taught to kind of exist without each other. Now, in the case of african-american men we are more or less taught that we should if we have a woman to take care of the woman and try to provide for a woman and do these things but on the other hand there's not a lot of value that that, that these women are being taught how to interact with the man what is her role in the relationship what should she do now i believe that in the nigerian communities and the other black communities that are uh, are merging they do um a a, a, a better job at that I don't yeah. know exactly how much better, but I, I probably would gauge it's better than us. But still, there's a level of entitlement because, again, these women are being influenced by women who are coming from single mother led homes. Like, for example, yeah. a, a Nigerian American uh, a doctor who might go to the, you know, uh, um, uh, Cornell Medical School, <laughs> she might be influenced by Meg Thee Stallion, who can't even read and write. Yeah. So you see this happening a lot in the emerging blacks that are being successful academically and financially, they are still being influenced by the social programming of, 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 of blacks and even, you know, closer to Dominicans like Cardi B. Yeah. That are pushing things 
that don't build relationships. And that is kind of the crux of where this all starts. Yeah. Where you have this African American man who the father's not there. He might have had some issues with his mom coming up because he looks at the father. And then when he comes out and dealing with a girl, he doesn't understand how to lead her. She wants and she don't understand how to respond to the lack of leadership or leadership. Yeah. And it's just a demise. So the only thing they can come together to do is, is have sex. Yep. And that's it. So the and, and so because these people have these dilemmas, they want to run from each other and find their situations maybe, you know, by themselves or in another race. Yeah. Now, don't they get to it's it, it sad because like it's one of those things where because where I see the problem coming from, too, is you get to the point where mm-hmm. you, you you start getting comfortable being by yourself you start getting comfortable seeing all this stuff um you know because you see mom do it by herself growing up because you didn't have that um um, role model and then you go up uh, you know you got your friends and some of your family other family members out there all doing the same thing so it gets easy to be comfortable in what they're doing but the thing is i'm not even sure if they're they're biologically they're noticing that but they understand mm-hmm. that something isn't right because there's a mm-hmm. whole lot more stress when it comes to mm-hmm. being an independent person that's what people don't mm-hmm. understand like it and what does kevin samuel say all the time you know pressure is made, made for shoulders not hips right so it's mm-hmm. one of those things where it's like you, you got to understand there's got to be a fair a balance in this mm-hmm. right you got to understand mm-hmm. that you know, having kids, and this is one thing I find so crazy, Ocean, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Especially with our community, we're mm-hmm. so, and I've done a couple reaction videos on this. We're so just nonchalant, and when we, when it comes to just saying, okay, I'd r- much rather have a kid than actually be married. Like, can you, can you walk me through this, too? And especially in, mm-hmm. the, um, in, in the African American community, like, why mm-hmm. is it that we're our women are more afraid of actually having a man help them through getting through life and kids and whatnot? And they're just more, they would just rather prefer just having the kid. Like, they just get the kid, forget the man. It is what it is. Why is that so much more of a prevalent thought process now? Well, I mean, I, I, I for those of you who are Christian, let's say, for example, you, you go to a church and, um, and the music has been bad for like 30 years. Yeah. Then you come in, let's say Kirk Franklin comes to your church one Sunday, right? And lit. he's like, okay, well, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm going to become your minister of music. And, um, and all of a sudden, within six months it's it's better but but you can't replace that six months of 30 years of that choir being terrible they're used to that that mirror used to you know how it was yeah right and I, I think if i can use that comparison it's really what the black community has fell into if you've never seen something or have value for it how how can you appreciate it right like for yeah. example i'm an american citizen I lived in America, but I'm in America, but now I'm in Poland. Yeah. And after being in here for five years, and I lived in Uganda for one year, I really have an appreciation for Amazon in America and <laughs> constant electricity yeah. and, and internet yeah. that's fast. You know? Yeah. I, I appreciate being an American citizen much more because I know what it felt like. And and now I'm here. But now if I'm dealing with somebody in Uganda who's never seen anything else. How, how could they then even see the world that I'm seeing? It, it's different when you are a person and you come from a family, both your parents were, were, were there and you've seen your parents and family work together and a person who hasn't been there and they haven't seen it, they can't miss what they never. So it's easy for them to say, That's true. Well, I'm going to do this by myself and I'm going to struggle. And even Mary J. Blige came out with us today. She said she's her own best friend. That's just an, another right. way of saying that, you know what? Like, I know that I, you know, that nobody's going to be with me. And um, that I'm problematic. And you know what? All I need is me. And you ha- hear all these ladies yeah. clapping in the background. But then when Mary J. Blige go make another album, here she comes crying about the fundamental issues. When I was a little girl, I didn't have a father. You're going to hear that. Yeah. You're going to hear, um, you know, you need to be patient with me. All these other issues that you've had. And then what happens is also what you've seen with Kevin Samuel's show is a lot of the brothers that are coming up. And let's say, for example, you come out of it like I did. Yeah, because my parents are married until I was about fourteen, and they got divorced. But I had a, a really strong, um, you know, Christian grandfather, and I had an older brother, so I had some people in my life that were still there to kind of help develop my masculinity. Yeah, let's just say, for example, you're a guy and you're talented, and you're able to use your gifts and your intelligence to push you into whether it's corporate America or to entrepreneurship. These are the ladies who have these issues that are entitled to deal with. You know guys you know that are very successful yeah well what happens when that guy becomes very successful well then he realizes that well damn you know i don't really have to put up with this if i don't need to yeah 
And you're seeing this also, not just African-American men. Let's even leave us out. Let's look at the emerging groups, the Nigerian-American community, the Caribbean-American community. Look who these guys are marrying. Yeah. These guys are the ones that are going to, you know, the Columbia's. They're getting into, you know, the Duke universities. And who do you think they're doing when they get there? White women. Uh, yeah, because yeah. what, what they're going to look at is, well, damn, you know, um, you, you, you know, her family, she, she's very, very entitled and she yeah. doesn't, you know, and, and still there's the culture that might be there, but she hasn't been taught that she needs to bring this to the relationship and this white yep. girl is bringing it, yep. right? And this Vietnamese girl is bringing it. They're actually putting effort into the relationship. So it's not just a, a, a African-American problem. This tends to be a black problem in general. In general. Yeah. I, I, I've been, I talked to black men all over the world in Johannesburg. Yep. I've talked to them on, on the internet in London. It's the, everywhere you go, the same song. That's crazy. It just no, but but, but 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 it's it's true. It's true because you got you, you tend to see that and 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 that's the thing because it goes towards what what you were talking about earlier the the fundamentals of trying to seek a good mate right in different mm -hmm. cultures right and it seems mm -hmm. like all these other groups aside from our community for for example seem to understand this right we're looking for you know a little bit more than what the person looks like or what the person has right. like all the surface level the ish that really doesn't matter we're looking at okay the character piece right and yes. that's the thing that oftentimes i don't hear that being talked about at all right especially mm -hmm. even because i you know growing up you know in african-american neighborhoods you know i had a lot of black friends and things like that so you're going into the house and hanging out it's like you don't hear those conversations whatsoever right but even mm -hmm. even like in our community even when i got married to the girl like she's black right but she's mm -hmm. american and my mom had a problem with the excuse american and not nigerian oh you were you know an african american yeah i married an african american right so like that's the thing so it was it was like because even then just marrying somebody who was Ameri american even if she's black right that's a problem, mm -hmm. right? Now, imagine if she was a white woman, my mom would have killed me. <laughs> she would have lost her damn mind. Oh. But it was one of those things where, like, that's how serious it was. But um, but now it's like, I think I was like one, like, at least my generation is one of the first that's like, it's even just being a man of her, it opens a lot, a lot of things where it's like, now you're seeing cats my age, they're not even just black women here, white women, Asian women, all these mm -hmm. different types of women, all these different opportunities. Because A, because here's the thing, I would even say from my experience dating, like, black women and all that stuff. I, it, first of all, I, I never really had like a huge problem with it, but I do see where a lot of guys right. are what they're talking about because I would yeah. much rather, and being Nigerian man, like, I got no, like, like, my, my, my pages is a little bit thinner. <laughs> like I don't have that much pages at all. So like I don't have right. a problem like going back and forth, but then my thing is like what I want to and why, right? The last yeah. time I did that, I got in trouble for it. So it's like, why am I, why am I going in and, you know, uh, trying to do this? So why am I wasting my time? Here's somebody who doesn't question me on everything that I do. And that was one right. thing I noticed, right? The first mm -hmm. relationship outside of that where I stepped out, right? And I got into it. I was like, all right, you know, what? let me try this here. What's what's happening here, right? And every time, like, I would I would make a decision, like, all right, I'm going to buy this right here. I would always explain, like, why I'm doing it, right? Because right. every I've, I've always I've dated black women up until this point, right? So, mm -hmm. and every time in my experience with that, like, when I would say I'm doing this, I would always get questioned, like, why? Like, why, why do you think, well, no, you should do this. Like, it was always this pushback, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the way I adapted was, all right, let me preemptively explain <laughs> what I'm about to do. <laughs> and so you understand why I'm about to do it. But then when I got into other communities, it was like, word, is, word, word was law. And I even got corrected when my, my, uh, the girl I was with at the time, she was like, baby, why are you, why are you asking me if you want to buy it? Why, why don't you just buy it? And I was looking at her like, well, I'm, I'm, I, I thought you'd probably have a problem with that. I don't know. Well, Rachel, she, I, I, she was white. She was white. Mm -hmm. The first white girl, like I, I took seriously after, uh, and this was actually after my divorce, because before that, I really didn't see like women of other races. Like, it's still cultural, culturally speaking. I was like, ah, I can't really mess with that. So I'm gonna stick with my sisters here. But then it was after my divorce, you know. And I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, let me let me try, let me try a different flavor. Let me I've had right, chocolate, right, right. I've had caramel. Let me see what my <laughs> all about. All right, let right. me see what's up here. And it was a completely different experience. And I can see how mm -hmm. that could be one of those things where it's like a, a lot of guys who especially were used to this kind of treatment from uh, uh their uh black women that they're dating and the kind of mm -hmm. pushback not saying that they're 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 me it's just like they're hard to love is what i would say right because when they mm -hmm. love you they love you hard right they especially if they fucks with you like that so it's one of those mm -hmm. things where it's like but you go to these other communities and it's a little bit of a smoother interaction and that's what yeah. a lot of guys are seeing and a lot of guys who at least want to be allowed a chance to just be a man they're seeing that in other communities versus their own and that's part of the problem yeah, like again, um, you know, uh, I, I was watching a guy named Neely Fuller, 
he was a, a prominent um social like i would say sociologist not trained but kind of you know yeah trained himself and he was talking about dr king when he got killed in memphis he was there for a garbage worker strike and uh, and that's how he got shot he was there for that that this particular protest and the, the black men that were there they didn't come out with the protest signs that said you know we want higher wages they came out with protest signs saying i am a man and you kept seeing these black men i am a man i am a man i am a man yeah and and it's it's interesting it means one thing like in in, in the american world the white man has pretty much taught everybody that black that you ain't a man but it's not just that it also uh, uh, you know if you want to look at it a lot of the women have have been taught that black men are not men yes you, you know and that's that's the thing so now a, a, as far as having a sexual organ in the penis you can do that and i need you to go lift these boxes you're a male but you know a lot of times in black relationships you find yourself um having to tell people who you are and and that's the fundamental issue if you're a black man that let's say if you go to get an nba georgia tech something like that you're doing very well yeah as much as you like black women there is a certain sacrifice if she hasn't had a father i don't know if the woman that you're married to was she a single parent she didn't she didn't she didn't have a um, she didn't have a father at all okay and even so, even at the further i am from my divorce the more i look at it right it was like damn dude, yeah. that, that must have played a huge role yeah. yeah so so you have to go back and you have to fight and let people know i am a man and it's not she could love you all all she wants but if she doesn't understand that role and so the reason why your parents didn't want her to be there because they were right it didn't yeah. matter that she was african-american as she wasn't supposed to be there you know it's like hey you know we live at a certain standard that she does not you know and and, and knowing her background we don't want our son to be i don't have any problem with that yeah now if it's just a cultural thing that she's black and nigerian that's also different i can also understand that too but people who live their life at a certain a certain level you know, you, you you don't want your kids, you know, it's just like me. If, if if I were to go back to the States, I don't want my kids going to kids that, you know, uh, uh, live in a, a, a South, South, yeah. Southwest Philadelphia. I, not that I don't like my people. I just don't want my kids hanging out with them. No, that's Why? true. Their, their parents probably haven't taught them the right thing. I don't want my kids because my kids will mess around to be ruined because, of, you know, these little kids. Right. <laughs> and that's the reality of the word is that a lot of African-American men feel that, hey, I'm not going to be a man with a black woman. She ain't gonna, and she ain't gonna let me be a man. She might yeah. have sex with me, and that's different. A lot, a lot of guys getting a lot of sex from women that's not getting their respect. Yeah, and a lot of times, a lot of black men don't understand, you know, the that you have to set those standards up front when you're dealing with a lot of black women. And if you want to deal with black women, and especially those if you want to make the community work, there is a lot of effort that you got to put in that you might not have to put in because every relationship has problems. Yeah, black or white. Asian, whatever, but the but but fighting for your masculinity, that's going to be the biggest problem, unfortunately. See, now one thing I also wanted to add in there because you you also touched on a good point is like how important is class, right, for black men who want to uh, uh, find suitable black women? Because I know they're out there. I date. I you find them here in Wisconsin too. I mean, not mm -hmm. very many of them, but they're here. But one thing I noticed between uh, uh, the black women I date now versus the black women I used to date when I was in college or high school is the black women now they're either they're in a different they're in a slightly different socioeconomical status, right? Mm -hmm. So with being in that status, there's there's a little bit of a a, a different uh, a field. There's not a whole lot of the, I wouldn't say the 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 right up front, you no know, attitude type of thing that I'm at least I'm seeing anyway. There's not a whole lot of that compared to what I've been dealing with. And uh, there's a little bit, obviously there's a little bit more pushback there, but it's not as crazy as, you know, how they're like some of the girls I would date back in college and high school, they, they it's ain't nothing for them to get in your face, right? It's not anything like that. Mm -hmm. These women, they're a little bit more softer but still assertive and i've found that those relationships tend to work out at least a little bit longer versus what i used to be uh used to back uh in high school and college now my question would be like if for black men does who still want to find success dating in the community should they start thinking about uh economical statuses of these women uh social uh, economical status of the women that they're considering uh dating should that be a, a something they should start thinking about well i, I think that because here's the tricky part with that. There are a lot of women. Let's say if you go to Atlanta, you know, um, certain cities in Detroit, 
Chicago. You're gonna see a lot of women that have a lot of um, you know, good job earning. Yeah. In 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 in, in, in masters or professional degrees. I think that's not what the issue is. I think what we're dealing with is what has she seen growing up that allows her to be a wife and caregiver? I think that's fundamentally w- w- what I'm dealing with. I mean, that's nice that if she is in the economic class, and that's really important because, God forbid, something happened to you, right? And or you're you're unable to be, you know, you're sick for a few months, something like that. You want your wife to be able to instill those educational values and those things you need to work hard and, and, right. and do well in life. So certainly those characteristics of 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 of, of, of raising of raising your children that is important. However, what has she seen as a model? to be a wife because one of the things that we got to understand is we don't have time to figure this stuff out okay that's right that's the thing is if you're if you're a guy and you're really doing very well you know god you know if you're you know even if you're not doing well but you see yourself doing well start to adapt this mindset already certain things if you don't have to put up with then you don't and life is short so if a woman doesn't want to follow what it is that you've laid out for her to follow and again and this is not being sexist or whatever if you're a man and I'm from the old school, okay, um, you know, I know that this is a, a, a relationship I do for you and do for me, but I yeah. believe that I'm the head, okay? Yeah. And you you, you should follow what it is as a, as a, because I'm your leader. That's why you're dealing with me. Yeah. Okay. Then you should honor the things that I'm asking you because if I'm, I'm telling you these things because I believe that it's the, for the best. I'm not telling you this to rule over you, but this is the, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. So if a woman has a problem with that sort of, if, that, if that's the kind of man you are, everybody's not the kind of man. But if she doesn't fit that style of, of, of leadership, and if she hasn't seen it, unless it is really in her nature to be like that. Some women are naturally yeah. like that. But usually it's a behavior that is learned. Be, being a wife or a mother and a nurturer, that's something that you have to learn. Yeah. You know? Like, you know, a lot of women are, are, are focused on, on learning how to make money and learn how to progress. That's good. When us as men, when we go to school or gain money, that's it helps our masculinity as the provision aspect of our masculinity. Yeah. When women do it, it doesn't help their, uh, you know, femin- feminine aspect of their nature. It, it actually kind of takes it away. Yeah. So you, you need to be able to still look at who was the mom? What did the mom do? Who was the grandmother? What did the grandmother do? And 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 not roll the dice and say, well, you know what? She gonna be different than the other two. It's it's probably not likely. So a lot of black men need to at least deal with women. If you can deal with them in the greater diaspora, if you like black women, who what family mold are they coming from that they see? Then we can deal with educational status later. Yeah. So and, 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 you're saying it's got to be, you know, it's got to be something more than just. And you know, one thing, the more you're actually saying that, the one thing, one thing I notice about the girls that I do date, and I'm thinking about, about it right now, they still have their dads in their lives, right? And their parents are still somewhat, somewhat of a, of a, of a um, influence in their lives. Not only that, some of them have uh, brothers uh, and, and whatnot too. And even Don and I had this conversation because we were talking. We're like, hey, man, is it, is it, is it, is it? Are they are the women better if they come from households where they're predominantly more males in the house, like they're the brothers and, you know, they got the dads in the house and they're able to understand and be used to that masculine kind of energy before going out into the world? Do that help them be a little bit more understanding in terms of dealing with men and understanding the men's energy? And it was one of those conversations that we had because I, I really didn't more that we're even having this conversation. I'm mm-hmm. starting to lean that way where even when kids are exposed to that masculine influence, especially when they're younger, they can better be able mm-hmm. to adapt and deal with it when they get older right because the one of the things that you want to have to do is be uh having to play somebody's uh father and boyfriend at the same time i've done that and you know you're going straight from doggy style to (laughs) you know what i mean and and that's what you're going to be dealing with with a lot of women in the in, in the black community and it's different if you have a woman because anything can anybody can change we know that because based off the story of malcolm x who he was and what he became. Yeah. You know, that transformation. But the the reality is is that do you do do many of these women let me kind of let me kind of let me kind of go back. A lot of women in the black community do not feel that there are enough talented black men who are worthwhile for them to change. Yeah. So like 
these guys don't even exist. So what am I? I might as well just keep doing me. So that's the number one issue is that, you know, these guys that are black that are doing very well in the United States that are husband material. And this it's like a getting a unicorn. Yeah. So what's the point in me changing who I am for them? That's the first thing. And then number two, where is the desire? And as a woman gets older, like you, you mentioned about youth, woman gets like 25, 30, 35. And, you know, if you've experienced a lot of different guys and picked up some bad habits, it, usually it's a little bit too late, you know, for, for a woman to, to, to change. Yeah. And guys can, 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 can feel that, that sense of unaccountability, blaming people for your last relationships. So the reality is that a lot of guys who they, the guys that these women want to date, they don't even have a chance. Yeah. You know, because. And I understand that the, 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 the white supremacy system has really broken up the relationships with black people, not just in the black American world, but, the, you know, things all over the world with blacks. We tend to have even in Nigeria. I mean, you look at all the yeah. problems that's going on there, you know, that's a with, British uh, with, influence right there. That's still yeah, white. Yeah, yeah, still. So, you know, the the the, 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 the tribalism beef that have always yep. been, you know, with the yep. Biafra Ebro, War. Yoruba, Ilsa, yep. yeah. My dad fought in that, by the way. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, so the Biafra War, which was interesting because, hey, they brought Christianity to the South region yep. and then went in front of the North. You yep. know what I mean? Gave them so, all the economical power. Say, hey, yeah, you guys. Yeah, actually, they brought Christianity to the South. You know what I mean? Which is, but so, so we understand that that is a systemic thing. Yeah. And I think that's what blacks need to understand is, you know, number one, um, if you're going to deal with the black community, it takes a lot of patience. But some guys don't want to understand that. They don't care. Like, okay, I understand this societal supremacy thing, but who cares? Look, I'm trying to be happy. But at the end of the day is that if women want to be wives uh, to men, you, you, it's not only that he has to bring money to the table and things. You're going to have to get some work. And a lot of times, where are these women even getting these resources to learn how to do this? What you're seeing now is that there's a myriad of femininity coaches. You have Kevin Samuels. So this is the first time they've actually had a resource. So maybe they're going to be wife schools or wife academies or whatever. I don't know. But like the there whole needs etiquette to be, school they used to have back in the day. <laughs> you're going to have to convert. Just like yeah. the Jack and Jill. You heard of Jack and Jill before? Yeah. So Jack and Jill is a, a black elite organization that have balls. And it's the black elite historically for a long time. Oh, I thought it was a, my bad. I thought it was a movie. I didn't, no, no, no. Never yeah, mind. yeah, no, yeah. Jack and Jill is a, a African-American elite. You have to be invited to be a part of Jack and Jill community. Okay. Like you can't apply. And they have these great balls and things like that. They teach these kids from the, um, as kids, how to be in the elite class and in the black, in the black, in the black world. Yeah. Similarly, these women who have never seen how to be a wife, how to be, a, and same thing with these guys. There has to be, like, just, the American economy is so good at taking non-skilled workers to skilled workers. Yeah. Just like Germany and Japan. So you have a lot of specialized workers in these economies in first world nations. Yeah. But in a similar fashion, there has to be a resource to take unmarried women who have never seen it and transition them Okay, here are my rules and here are his rules and, and, and to go into married life. Because you're going to keep seeing the problems like we get together, can't get along, and we divorce. Yeah. It's going to continue to happen. I almost think that because was, that was going to be my next question, right? Because we, when we were talking about earlier in our earlier conversation, we we're talking about how much of culture is impacting the way uh, men and women are thinking, but primarily how women are being affected by this, right? And while we were just having this conversation about potentially, you know, the, uh, uh, the, this new age coming out, the femininity coaches, the guys who are uh, uh, coming out and really helping, at least trying to help these women, uh, uh, you know, understand what the men are really thinking and how they're really thinking it. And now we're, you know, thinking about like having different because i was gonna the question was gonna be like what are the ways we can actually start you know bringing people together and start actually having this conversation you kind of touched up on that too as well is there a way that we can start how, how can we even start making this the new culture say okay maybe okay maybe for us african americans in little communities who are spread out across the country right now mm -hmm. you know they even starting out small this is what we do 
let's start let's start with this okay women girls boys from a young age kind of like the program you were talking about this is how mm-hmm. things are supposed to happen, right? Because even mm-hmm. look at like how how they all had it with the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, right? How they had that going on. Even to a certain degree, that was some level of rite of passage, right? And you were talking yeah. earlier about like how uh, uh, traveling and whatnot, especially for young males, I actually recommend it, going out into the world and experiencing it, right? But it's one of those things where it leads to adding an element of a uh, uh, perspective that you wouldn't mm-hmm. otherwise have been used to, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that in terms of having little uh, smaller communities at least the the you call them the old heads or the people who are you know at least older in those communities starting up some of these programs for their uh, young children is that be a viable way for us to start moving forward at least on a smaller scale well here's what has to happen to me some people are gonna, are gonna like this but you know i'm i've been in um, other other places where um where men are the ones that are uh, providing economic resources to the communities and this is something that, you know, if you want to see, like the old African proverb is that the grass is greener where you water it. Yeah. So here's what black men have to do. A lot of black men can point out these issues and to point out these problems, but you're not going to see any money being spent. You're not going to see anything that brings these men together, um, that starts up businesses things that help black men get ahead. You know, a lot of times black men um, don't like to, and I try to do that on, in, in the, in the manosphere community. Cause I know it was something that we needed. I work with a lot of different brothers over the years mm. uh, and, and, and to increase my network, not only that, but just to kind of, you know, be a thought leader in the, in the, in the collaboration effort of African-American men, not even only that and in Africa, cause I am a yeah. pan African. Yeah. Um, so, but, but if you don't have the opportunities to provide for your women, if you cannot provide for your children, if you don't have jobs to where, you know, um, in the summertime, my kid don't have to go to work for McDonald's. He can work for Duke and Don. Yeah. You know, once you have those kind of thoughts and things like that, then you have a community that, okay, listen, if you ladies want to be here, here are the rules. If you look at the nation of Islam, the nation of Islam has, has already set us a, a blueprint. Like if you want to be in the nation of Islam and they got some of the most feminine women in the nation of Islam, some of the earlier ones were on drugs, mm. right? And they were were, were prostitutes. Uh, we know that about Na- Malcolm X because he was ex-con, but yeah. he was cleaned up because the people gave him the resources to clean it up, but it's not gonna help it overnight. Mm. You have to have partitions of industry. You have to have um, things that offer your people. You have to have things to offer your women. You have to have infrastructures to offer your children. And once you have these and you have these little things that you have, you have these balls, you have these other stuff, then you start to set the rules. You have to change the culture by your work. Mm. And that's going to be a problem for a lot of black men. A lot of black men love to point out the issues, but they're not going to point out the, 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 the things. And so if you don't, and as a man, I believe, and I tell everybody this, it's one thing to have a job and work with people, but you need to create your own resources because it's YouTube shit teaches you that, right? Yeah. You know, you got to, you get you, what you, what you kill is what you eat. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't so, making the video, you ain't. I'm sorry, right? Ain't doing shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, and, and you need a lot of help in life. Um, you need a lot of friends, and and, and black men have to develop that and, and get back into their masculine perspective, and and and, and helping men come up. You know, we talked about Kevin Samuels. I remember the guy came in in 2017, yeah. but man, that one interview, the first one that he got from me, look how look how much that man has meant to my life. And every time I talk to him, like I thank you. For blowing up and what you have done for me because you, yeah. you you've kicked it all back you know what i mean yeah you've been a resource to me because and we've been friends the whole time yeah. and i can never thank him enough for that and now he's giving back he's a, a complete economy to everybody on youtube it's a million yeah. dollar economy a month or more you know what i mean yeah it's off his reactions but men have to control the things that they want to see women will follow but you can't just make the arguments and not have the infrastructures there. Uh, yeah, that's and that's what you know what that, that's that's a factual thing because that's part of the reason why even we're in this space talking about this. I've noticed that a lot of guys, particularly black men, because it's one of those things where they're it, you're right. They you hear a lot of complaining, you hear a lot of talking about the problems with relationship things like that. And it's like you look at their life, it's like, well, okay, what what are you doing to make yourself an actual attractive mate, right? What, 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 okay, what are you doing? It's easy for, the, for you to talk about and point the finger about what the other sex isn't doing, right? But what are you mm-hmm. doing, right? Kind of like what 
you said. It, it, it's kind of really, and that's why so many guys, I know y'all are listening right now, some of y'all in the chat, right? Y'all y'all flame me for coming at some of the guys out here, because I come at the guys here on this channel really hard. And the reason why I do that is because, A, first of all, from my background, the dudes get the work. Like you get, you're, you're expected. Like none of this stuff where, oh, you know, you got to feel sorry for me. My life is hard. Everybody's life is hard. We all know that shit. So what? When the end day, you're gonna be judged on what you can do. Like your results. What can you do, oh, yeah. right? So yeah. if you're sitting here complaining about it, and I'm looking at your track record, there's no results there. Then what? Why are you sitting there complaining? To do what? So that's why when we come in after these guys, there's a reason why. Because I say that y'all in charge of this. Like O'Shea was basically saying, man. Like if y'all want women. To be able to acquiesce to the program why instead of sitting there crying about it they, they're not listening to you doing anything why don't you go ahead and make yourself the person to create the rules that they have to acquiesce to and they'd be go. willing to do it because you already have a community you already have an infrastructure set and for some yeah. reason that's a problem because oh, oh um, you just saying all guys yeah. can't fucking, they can't do this and that's like what right. so you're doubting yourself already so that's the thing I always have a problem with if you're gonna keep talking yeah. fine but people are gonna start getting tired because now you're that kid that cries wolf yeah, and what they're going to say, well, well, they don't let Pookie and Ray Ray do this. And, you know, like, you know, like, for, for for example, you know, I'm a I'm a man that is, um, you know, I'm from the old school. Yeah. You know, and I, I believe that as a man, you know, uh, you 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 have to have a killer instinct. And you're either going to, you know, as a city and say you're going to shit or you're going to get off the pot. Yep. And that's and that and I, I might be somewhat of I'm 40, but I might be like, yeah, closer to being, you know, middle age now. But I remember I remember that. You know, my father told me that you're not going to get nothing out of life if you don't produce it. Yeah. And that's the same thing. And a lot of black men want a lot out of life. Some of them, but you don't want to do the work. Yeah. So if you want people to respect you, you're going to have to respect it based off of your work, off of productivity. Yeah. Now, I know some people are going to say, well, the Pookies and Ray Ray's don't have to do that. Well, I I'm pretty sure that if she's dating Pookie and Ray Ray, you don't want her anyway. Yeah. They're the kind of woman that you want to deal with no way. So we ain't talking about that. We're talking about being competitive and being, you know, um, um, a men that that are passing things on and doing things for our community, making it better. And it takes continuous work. See, and that's my, the thing. My thing is this. When, when I hear guys complain about this, because a lot of the stuff that these guys are talking about, man, a lot of the women issues is one of those things where it could like that attitude. This is where it takes them far. Right. They're being able to solve that problem. You got to figure out what it is your inadequacies are. Right. You got to point because like I said, I, we all had those issues. Like I had you you're sitting there talking about all oh, Pookie and Ray. No one I figure out all this stuff with women and what that that was solved in high school. If you want to figure out how to get women, look at what they're doing. The guys who you call them Pookie and Ray Ray, the Chad's, the Tyrone's, these guys. What are they doing? All right. Oh, they're they're in they're in athletics. Oh, they're they're in all these social uh, settings, right? Oh, they're okay. Let me go do what they're doing and take some of that, right? Like like Kevin Samuel said, steal what you can, right? And this is something you hear in the sales business a lot, right? You hear somebody use a verbiage that ends up getting the sale or, or getting someone close to the sale, steal it, take it. So why is he sitting there complaining? Where well, you can look at what they're doing and take certain elements of what they're doing and incorporate that into your uh, life and then move forward. And this is the whole complaining about the Pookie and Ray Ray. Like you said, if she's only attractive to that, right? You gotta understand what is it about that element they're attracted to, right? The 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 potential, uh, what is the status, the stability they could provide, potentially provide, right, or not provide, all these different things. Why don't you take some of those confidence and all those different skills and uh, have it for yourself? And that's the one thing. It's like you see that you you're hearing it in this space so much now, and you you, you rarely see a whole lot of solutions that are being brought up. It starts to get a little exhausting. Like, he's right. just tiring. It's like, oh, my God. Like, again with the black women, again with the women entitlement, we already know. Brother, what are you going to throw right. about? <laughs> right. And it, and it usually is going to be nothing, you know. And that's uh, typically what you know, black people, they tell you, know, like, James Brown had a song called Talking Loud, Not Saying Nothing. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that's typically what it is. But for those people who get it, is that people, um, you know, a lot of times as, as black men, you know, it, it, I kind of tell people all the time. You want to play, I tell girls, you know, ladies I deal with, you want to play games, that's fine. But I can tell you one thing, you won't do it here. Mm. You want to play a game, you can go buy your Xbox or a PlayStation 5. But here, you will not do it. Because if you, like my, my, my parents should tell me, grandparents should tell me, they said, boy, when you live here, you ready to be in by this time, you're going to work and you're going to go to school. If you don't want to follow my rules, you can get out. Mm. And that's the same thing here. As a man, I've worked hard all my life, graduated medical school and all that. If you're going to be here, you're going to listen to me. You're going to be obedient to what I'm asking you to do. 
or if not, you won't do it over here. But you can't make that statement if you ain't a man that is respectful like that. Yeah. Okay. A lot of these brothers gotta be, you, you gotta be able to say the things that you mean and back it up with proof. Yeah. Okay. And be willing to walk away. Some guys make these little, well, if you don't do this, I'm a, and you can be back over there tomorrow. Yeah, they don't stand their ground. So then, how you can know? they take you seriously? And, and, and a lot, of, a lot of the brothers is out there is you know it's hard for them to take you serious you know a lot of black men it's just like i was talking about black women i said how can you be a sister you want a high value man you are out here with a, a, a purple weave a blonde weave stilettos every picture on instagram is a booty shot i look at your, your video and you're twerking you're in the club popping bottles what kind of what kind of man is, is that's serious about his life is gonna really want to be with a woman that's like that, yeah. honestly. A man that's really, really about it stuff. And it's similar. If you're not a man that is productive, if you're not a man that is about doing something in life, what 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 kind of woman do you expect is gonna submit to you? And that's another thing. A lot of black men have to be representative of what they're talking about. Some are, and they still may have may, may, may could be having problems. And I get that. Don't understand that because you know you can do that. But at the same time, you know. Everything's about economic. It's not about economics. It's about also understanding your values. Yeah. And when you understand your values, you're going to be able to say up front, "Here's here's where we're going to have the agreement. I need this, 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 and this from you because I got my network. I, I know what I have to offer you. Okay, and for you to be here, this is what you need to do. And what I have to do. And a lot of black men don't know themselves. You know, no. and, and yeah. we got a lot of black men that you know, unfortunately, the money grows before they can develop a lot of black guys go through that so yeah. but once you get to the situation where you know you've developed you can you can you can you can you can say and i know it's i'm 40 this is what i'm gonna take and this is what you need to do if you don't do this i can tell you where you're going yeah i don't care where you're going but you're not gonna be here <laughs> gonna that's be what here. i know <laughs> you're not gonna be here that's for sure <laughs> okay that's so like, it was I was gonna ask because that's a, such a fantastic point, man. And you notice that like a lot of dudes, they don't really mean be meaning what it is. And the girls be looking at them like, okay, well, if you can't even be structured and rigid in your own decisions, how can I take you seriously? So what? What? And you, you step because I, I want to move on to the next topic, but I want I want to end on this for for uh, this, this particular topic here. What do you think that black men? kind of have to start the steps at least the baby steps right we'll, we'll start mm -hmm. small for you guys out here all right the baby mm -hmm. steps the most black women men right now who are not feeling as confident in themselves who don't mm -hmm. feel like they can be as assertive with the women that, that's probably in their lives right now some of you guys watching mm -hmm. right what steps can they take solely to start building that that confidence that backbone that rigid to the point where they can say hey listen baby hey don't let the door hit you on the way out when you when you leave all right <laughs> like mm -hmm. if you ain't gonna do this there's a door right over there right mm -hmm. because i feel like because here's one thing, one one thought process. Because one the red, the red pill community says, and this is one thing I agree with, is the abundant mentality, right? Where mm -hmm. it's just like not just in a sense of just oh I got all these women I'm gonna talk to, not just that, but like for me, if I'm not dealing with you, I'm at work, I'm, I'm working, I, I'm working 24 seven. So if you're mm -hmm. I'm, you're an afterthought, I'm not even thinking about you that much because I'm at work. So there's something else taking my time away. So what is it that these men, young men, and some of these younger men who are also in a relationship need mm -hmm. to start doing to start building that backbone and confidence? Well, I mean, I, I would leave, um, you know, the fact that, you know, you got some girls number the, the other day and things like that out of the equation. I would look at just simply look at where your life was two years ago and maybe where it is now. And if you're a man that you feel that your life has made some development, meaning that, you know, based on your own efforts and your own personal attempts to improve your quality of life. And if you've made progress in that, even if it's not, you know, very much visible, but you understand that that in itself should be able to give you some firm more confidence. Now, it might not be the confidence that you need to talk to women um, or to deal with women. That is something a little bit different. But the thing about it is, is that if you're working in some place and, 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 and people are, are now hiring you, then what that says is that you've you've established some level of value for yourself based off your efforts. You know, and I think that's the main thing that you got to do if you, if you yeah. take that woman out of it. Am I a man that my life has developed in a way such that I am now more valuable than what I was last year or two years? And then if the answer to that is no, then you need to work on it. But if the answer is yes, well, then if I'm valuable 
to the greater society in whatever way it is, then I can be valuable to somebody else in, 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 in the mate. You might not have the game or the mouthpiece, but as long as you know that you're valuable, you can bet on yourself and you're the one that got up every morning at four o'clock and you know that you had to, you know, pass that last class at six o'clock in the morning to graduate and you made it and you did that. You, you start to know that you, you're, you're, you're pushing yourself forward. Yeah. So your abilities to be who you are, that's the first step of confidence. Then that confidence may not. And the thing about men is that women don't see you for those things. Because even though me, I'm I'm doing very well, but you know, the woman meets me, she's not gonna notice that, you know, um, hey, you know, you're 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 a hardworking guy and you make a lot of money. That might not be as important to her. Yeah. But for me, it's important for me. And and that's the thing that guys gotta understand. It's not about how people feel about you, it's how you feel. Mm. You know, a lot of times we 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 care about how some woman feels about you, and that's important to I, I get that. But it's how you feel about yourself. Because even in relationships, if I feel offended by what a woman does, it doesn't matter how she feels. It, it matters about how I feel. And if I feel that you did something to me, then you're done. Because it's about how I feel. And and, and it's, it's and so once you say, I love me more than anybody else, then we're in business. Yep. But if you're not there, then you can't make no steps at all. Yeah. And that, that, that's what I say, guys. You got to this whole conditional, unconditional love that, you know, you guys have been growing up and thinking. Right. Because I, I think especially with black men, it's one of the things I see a lot. Right. That we try to give uh, uh, a lot of ourselves. You even see that some of the young, like you said, you know, when the money comes fast before, you know, uh, the, the maturity comes. You see some of these uh, young athletes or some of these guys who find success very early. You know, in comes, you know, all these other people around them comes to take advantage of them because they're so willing to give and not willing to set boundaries for themselves and the other people that are around them so i mean if you allow yourself to be taken advantage of that's what most people are going to do and yes that includes certain family members too as well it's just how life is but um one thing i want to ask and it's going to be a great transition to our next topic is you know in terms of building that backbone and building that confidence i think traveling in the world and being out out and about you know and seeing different perspective also adds to that confidence and being, uh, being out there i wasn't a keen to like um, a young man going out into the unknown and trying to find himself and whatnot. And, and here's the thing, what you've done too, because you also do some work overseas. Country was it? Is it uh, Uganda, right? Yeah, yeah, Uganda. Uganda. Okay, okay. I was gonna say Ghana, but I'm like, nah, it's not Ghana. That's too. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's Uganda. gotta be Uganda. Um, so you you do and as you do a lot of movies and uh, a lot of um uh, entertainment uh, based stuff, right? And you, mm -hmm. I don't know. So it's more like because that's the one thing I found very interesting. I'm like, <laughs> first of all, your acting skills. <laughs> That is that is some uh, some uh, interesting stuff, man. You you I didn't know you was an actor. First of all, I know you I'm a struggle know. actor. <laughs> struggle actor. But uh, but but going out there and uh, first of all, let me ask this because I think it's important uh, what you're doing down there and, and what you're trying to create. But how did you got how did you get started in the film industry down in Uganda? Why did you get into uh, uh, that particular niche? And how, why is it important? For, I know there's a loaded question here, but why do you think it's also important for other black men and not necessarily finding, you know, going in and doing entertainment and whatnot, but for you as a, a, a business or for you, at least some kind of opportunity mm -hmm. that not only you're providing for yourself, but the people who you're uh, dealing with down there. Mm -hmm. why, why is it important for them, uh, for black men or just men in general, but particularly black men to go down there or go around the world and seek opportunities elsewhere? Well, um, number one, let me kind of start with the uh, why I went to why I went to uh, Africa. So I, one of my good friends is Wody Maya. I don't know if you know who he is. I've heard about him. Yeah, so Wody Maya is a, a personal friend. So he's like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, come to Kenya, man, come to Kenya. So I was just so I came there, and uh, uh, so but I, I've been following him since he had about like fifty some thousand subscribers. And um, so the things about you know having access to different markets if you keep going to the same place it gives you you know as a black person any person what do you call it some kind of sort some sort of competitive advantage yeah because i'm able to do things in another place it's the it's the advantage that most nigerians have had over had had for years yeah. you know they live in an Anambra state they understand the poultry business there they work here in america they got the brother there they sending money there, building the stuff. They got a business there, homes there, and you they know. get they rich everywhere, right? So that was a, that was a situation that I wanted to see for myself. So first, I wanted to see if I liked it, but I was already living in Poland because 
I was living here for school. Yeah. But just to just to just to see, you know, to travel and just to see, you know, um, what's out there to see, you know, the different cultures, you know, just to see what opportunities to see what other friends, because a lot of countries have a lot of talent that's untapped. Yeah. And it's as opportunities that are opportunistic I can have. And I think that what happens is that for other guys, when you go to different places, you get to see, of course, different women, right? And you get to see, you know, hey, if I'm able to survive, I don't even maybe have to live in America. Maybe I can do something here too. And you just get, the world becomes more open. And I think that's what guys need to do. You need to have more of an open world for your own economies, for your own things like that. But what happened was how I started getting involved into um, to the film thing was with Kim the Comic, one of the editors that we have. Um, I wasn't even into the celebrity junk thing until one of my other editors mentioned that we should call it the celebrity junk. Yeah. So I started dealing with talented people in Africa that I met through Woody Maya that were in a similar business and um, it, it helped us grow to where we are now. So you, you, you get to meet more people, you get to meet more smart people. You get to be able to, to, to establish a competitive advantage for yourself. So if you're a man and you, you you travel and you can at least, you know, I know it's traveling for vacation, but if you could go to the same place um, a lot and you like it over time, that all that knowledge compounds. Yeah. You know, you're able to do business. You're able to do things and you, you, you're able to give yourself more opportunities and the more opportunities a man can get, the better his dating, you know, the, the quality of dating can happen. So you want to give yourself more opportunities to do whatever you can. Yeah. No, that's that, that's facts. And 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 that they, would you say that that was one thing that also you know becoming adding to becoming seasoned and being able to understand a little bit more about the world grasp because you're seeing things from other expect uh, perspective. I mean, for Pete's sake, you're doing business in other countries, transacting other countries, building uh, uh, economies in other places, which has to add to a certain level of confidence in where you see the world and how you uh, uh, go about it. And I think that that's something that a lot of young men, even young young African-American men, if anything else, you want to find new waves. I think Africa is the new Wild West for you guys. Real talk. Like, it's one of those places where, like O'Shea was saying, un tapped potential there right and people that you could absolutely uh utilize do business with and you can absolutely grow and it just comes from venturing out because it's one thing you said earlier um in an interview and I, I thought it was very important because i noticed this even as a kid coming to america right i noticed that even with with the, the black community when i first got here they tend to stick within the group and me and my brother my sister like since when i did we didn't really oh yeah we we, we vibed with uh with the african-american community we connected well but we didn't have a problem going and dealing with other communities and oh let's see what y'all let's let, what y'all doing over here we, we got white friends we're gonna hang out over here asian dude over there we're gonna hang out over there. so i had no problem going to different groups and garnering those different experience but one thing i noticed is that my black friends they wouldn't do it all they it's like what would you hang out with them dudes for like it, well so it's I, because I, of, it's because uh, of the racial dynamic that's going on in America for all these all that time. That's why. For example, yeah. if I were to go to Nigeria, what, what, are you a uh, Igbo? Igbo, yep. I can I can look at you and tell. So you Igbo guy. <laughs> so where are you from? Anambra? What's that? Anambra, Anambra, yeah. Anambra. Okay. So so if 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 let's say if we're in Lagos, and there's some uh, Yoruba guys, like I, I know that Lagos is a pretty diverse city, but uh, let's just say if I come there. You know, you're, you're probably if, if you're a company that's hiring in 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 in, in, in um um in Lagos and you're an Ebo employer, I'm probably sure most of your employees will also be Ebo, despite yeah. how qualified the Yoruba guy is or the guy from Kaduna, yeah. right? Like, yeah. now me as African American, if I were to come to Nigeria, I don't care nothing about that. I don't care who's from this place. I don't yeah. care if you. It doesn't matter, right? Because I'm not I'm not in that dynamic. Same thing with, so when I go to Uganda, I'm not caught up in who's Muganda or who's from the Toro, the Rust region. It don't matter to me because I don't, it doesn't bother me. That, which is similar to when you came to America, you were around everybody else. Now you take an African-American and drop him in Ghana. He not going to care about, you know, oh, you're from this place, you're from that place. He ain't going to care. Yeah. That's going to be able to help him get probably a little bit further because he's not from that environment. That's true. So that's why. Because whenever you have dynamics and histories, people in the country, you tend to not be not everybody but you tend to be more closed off yeah because of the racial dynamic 
It makes sense. And I, I think that that we at least start to, especially in this day and age, that's something we got to start working on. And it's going to help us kind of, you want to talk about that sm- starting on a small scale, start dealing with other uh, cultures and just gaining different perspectives, seeing how they do it and then incorporating that. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm actually seeing that starting to happen, especially with the younger African-American crowd nowadays. You know, you're seeing them with all these, hanging out with all these different communities and everyone's kind of like mixing, especially with the younger kids. So it, it's it's good to see that, to see those uh, that culture um, spreading. Um, but it's one of those things where it's absolutely important to at least start getting that um different point of view um so i i, w- I would say this uh because we're, we're talking more about the uh, opportunities and whatnot so what what kind of benefits did you see that you derive from what you were the work that you're doing in uh, uganda and how how is it impacting the other individuals there and why, why do you think more african-american men should start really seriously considering uh, uh not, not, I'm not saying they have to go to the same country, but at least start exploring. Let me ask, ask some the question again. The, the the first question. What was it then? So it was basically. So and you, you. What do you? So why? So what? What benefits did you did you get from what you're doing down there? Not just mm-hmm. for for you, but like the how how you see it impacting the other communities. Because you also said that like down there, it doesn't really matter what tribe I'm dealing with. I'm here to do business. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. How, how do you see the local economical impact with, I'm assuming you're, the, the U.S. dollars it obviously travels far and what you're doing down there too as well. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's that's one thing that, um, I mean, we can gauge stuff like, okay, I'm, 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 we did some things that make some money. But let's just, you know, I was already in the YouTube business, but it was further expanded with more technical help. Okay. I mean that, you know, that now we're able to get, you know, we're able to do more things and be a little bit more, di- a lot more diverse in the content. But the, the biggest takeaway is not necessarily like, oh, you know, well, how much money are you employing people or whatever? It's more or less of the development I've grown as a person. Yeah. I always say that's the biggest takeaway. I've become more, much more of a patient person. I've become more of a good, better negotiator, a finder of talent. I know um, it's hard negotiating down there. Yeah, <laughs> how to, how, how to, yeah, <laughs> and, and a lot of times, you know, you can take things personal, um, and I don't get you nowhere. And it's just, you know, the the, the patience and the and in, in the development of knowing how to work with people, yeah. how to build systems, how to build a good team. And I say this right now, um, my editing squad, I call them Brain Gain Entertainment. You know what I mean? Hey, yo, and I got the best. Yeah, well, editing, well, bro. <laughs> yeah, we we have some heavy. You know, you got Dima in Russia. Um, you know, shout to SPK speaks. He's a he's a monster. Yeah. Um, we got we got a lot of heavy artillery that we work with on those PCs out there. You know, we have a lot of high power guys that that do a lot of great things. Um, and that's the thing we you know how to build a team that is really really talented. Um, and in a place like Uganda, we have guys from Kenya that that live there in Uganda now. I have a guy from you know Russia. Yeah, SPK from the USA there. And um, at any point, man, we can, we 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 have raised the editing standard in Black YouTube that we're we're, we're good on the international standard. Yeah. So to, to come there with nothing, and then you know to progress to where we are now as a unit, um, it's amazing. And so that's what I will say that I will I, I've learned from there. And I will say for Blacks that are trying to go to Uganda or any African country, you know, you gotta you have to have some knowledge of an industry before you go. And that's the problem that a lot of guys come to Africa. Oh, I'm back in Africa and I have a cell phone and I'm a document my, ju- my, my journey and the white man, I hate him and I'm I'm finally free. The reality is that nobody cares about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, you need to have your infrastructures and your skills before you come. Um, many Africans will tell you if you want to do something in Africa, you're going to have to keep leaving and going back, 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 leaving and going back. So if you're not committed to that, then don't. Because yeah. you're going to have to have your equipment. You're going to have to have your skill set, knowledge of the business. If you don't have a knowledge of the business, maybe you want to become an agribusiness farmer or something like that. Maybe you want to learn the industry while you're in the States, then leave and go back and then keep practicing and leave and going back. You know, doing things in Africa is, um, Africa's a lifetime commitment. It's not a play thing. Yeah. It's nothing to be played with. Okay, because Africa, you know, certain countries in Africa eat you up alive. They so you have to be. You have my to uncle be tells me stories committed. all the time. <laughs> yeah. So if my you're committed bribery, to that, bribery is a, a huge part of it, especially in Nigeria. Oh yeah, well, corruption is 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 all through the sub saharan uh, um, um, continent. I love. I miss it. I mean, I, I, I complain about it, <laughs> ready to go, but I love it. I've been to Africa seventeen times in the Drive last four years. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, at least in Uganda, they don't even they don't get you at the airport. I heard in Nigeria, 
You know, they they ain't ready to get you right. You've been there before. They I've never been play, there, bro. They, bro, I grew up there <laughs> until I was eight. Like, okay. I'm telling you, it was it was bad. It yeah, was it, you can't even move, man. Because like, yo, yo, people think like even when like highways and stuff like you can just get on the road and travel. It's not like that, man. There's so many. Just to give a point A to point B, you got to go through so many different freaking trials just to get there. So that's even another thing I was talking about that goes to our, our larger point, man. Yeah, this is another experience on the other side of the world. Some of y'all would come in and say, "Oh, corruption. Oh, this is." This is bad. I can't handle that, right? Listen, that's that's business as usual in some of these other countries. That's literally what they do. So, I mean, if you can't handle that, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's probably not for you. But then again, if you can stomach through all that, you come out a, a completely different man, like a completely different beast, someone who understands and comes from a, 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 a perspective of experience and knowledge. Right. Right. And, um, you know, again, it's, a, it's about more development and understanding more or less how the global world works yeah. and um I, I i wouldn't have had that experience in america so if you can do that any country you know i mean obviously uganda was, was really good for me because it's um english speaking but um yeah it's good to be able to go out and see what you can do in life shit <laughs> yeah yeah guys y'all heard it here first man i know you got an hour with me so i'm trying to keep it right then there i know we got we about like seven minutes over but i appreciate you again o'shea coming on here we got to do this again and, and it probably have to be here. next year because like, hey, i gotta chase this youtube money player but you gotta do yeah, what you gotta back. do but yeah i'll definitely <laughs> come back i appreciate it man we definitely gotta have this conversation there so there you guys have it folks hey do you have anything to add o'shea before we go no man thank you for having me i, mean, I had a really great time um, you know, your, your channel is, uh, you, you, you do your, a uh, lot of research and your, uh, takedowns of, uh, kind of and sharp. So, uh, you know, Mr. Nah, you got, Conovan you got, you got, you got to study some of these fools, man, especially what they be saying. If you come at them, you got to come at them with, with, with their right. actual words. It's like, listen, right. we know you're fake. Now you got to tell yourself that you are fake. <laughs> Right. No, but yeah, right. hey guys, man, you already know who O'Shea Duke Jackson is. So listen, go show him some love for some of the guys who don't have him here, uh, haven't or don't already know him or not familiar with his channel. Man, this man is like he puts out the dopest content in the black manosphere, uh, hands down. In terms about the editing skills, is second to none. Like it, it, no one even comes close. I, I would say. It, it's pretty up there, like elite status. So go ahead and check that out, man. Go ahead and hit that sub button and you know show the love there, all right? And that's what we got for you today. We got a, a couple more shows coming there uh, down this week. So guys, make sure you stay tuned to it. And the one way, sure the ways you guys know that is hit the like button, hit that sub button, hit that bell notification so you get notified whenever we go live, dog. Because that's how else would you know we gotta have a show? But with that being said, I appreciate you guys. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.